Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Cyril Ramaphosa delivered his opening of Parliament speech last night. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the highlights for business and the economy. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What were some of the key themes that are of interest to business? Well, I think the main one is that at the heart of this government of national unity and its program of action, which I think was very unclear uh, as we, you know, emerge through into a sort of a coalition con country, um, is that it's going to be about economic growth, inclusive economic growth and job creation. And I think that's an important theme because South Africa, uh, everyone knows, has been growing far too slowly for far too long. Some of that has been because of external factors such as the global financial crisis that became a, an economic crisis for the world. And then, uh, then we've also had the COVID crisis that, that really we couldn't control. But we're intervening in the intervening years, we definitely had a number of own goals around the economy, particularly around the state capture years, where we basically hollowed out very key drivers of economic growth uh, in the, from the government public sector side, Eskom being the main one, where we've entered this very extreme period of load shedding for a number of years and have had to try and uh, rebuild the capacity within that state-owned company and then obviously the other one being Transnet, both of which are still drains on growth and development in South Africa. So it's vi vital that we start growing better than the sort of average of one and a half percent that we've had for the last 15 years. It's not really even keeping pace with our uh, population growth, which means all our matrices with regard to poverty and inequality also deteriorate because if we're not growing, we're not creating employment. In fact, our sensitivity, our employment creation sensitivity to growth is actually within global norms. So when we grow, we do create jobs. I know we had this mantra that it was jobless growth uh, in the early periods of democracy when we were growing strongly, but actually uh, the analysis shows that we do create jobs if we grow but we, we just haven't been growing for so long that we are now in a very sort of, uh, we've got such huge backlogs in terms of uh, unemployment and it's particularly extreme at the youth unemployment level. And if you look at the rest of the world, Kenya and Bangladesh on the agenda at the moment, when you have those sort of conditions, you know, that, that's, you sort of have a that danger, the ever present danger of massive social disruption emerging from the younger people in, in the population who are frustrated, rightfully so, where there's just not enough jobs, and uh, not uh, jobs for them to be absorbed into the economy and their prospects are therefore very dim. The reforms initiated by the last government seem to remain central to the GNU. Yes, I think we're looking at now Operation Vulundlela 2.0 as we enter this new administration. That seems to be an agenda point item that all the ten parties of the government national unity, some of which are uh, now represented in cabinet, have agreed on at this cabinet Lakota that took place. And those reforms around electricity, we're only really at the end of the beginning there. <laughs> we still have a long way to go around those reforms, but there has been progress, but we need to see more happening there. Uh, the reforms around uh, freight logistics, similarly, we're only really at the beginning there. Uh, we haven't seen any thought third party access yet to the rail. We still haven't seen the big private sector partnerships at the ports. Uh, those are coming, but they, they, they are slow in coming and these reforms do take time. Uh, we've seen some progress on visa reform around skills and tourism, but that too, we've got a long way to go there. And then obviously water, which is a big issue in many cities at the moment, that is a major reform area that has to continue, not just on water use licenses, but there has to be a bigger focus on bulk water, as well as reticulation at the municipal level, where we've got these massive leak problems, uh, where we need to grow the networks and we haven't been doing it. But what was signaled is that there's going to be new areas of reform added uh, to, to stimulate growth. And I think the big one there is around the municipalities, particularly the metros where there's going to need to be really dedicated attention, not only at the metro level of leadership there, where uh, you know, the, the fragile coalitions have really taken a toll. 
uh, and uh, there's, there's just so many backlogs. It's not just at the small municipalities, but now at the, the large metro level. So I think there's going to have to be attention, and that was signalled in the speech that Operation Vulandlela 2.0 will include this focus on the Metropolitan, the Metropolitan Council, but also the municipal backlogs. And then uh, also this digital economy doing more. We obviously have had some, uh, you know, in terms of the spectrum being auctioned, that was a big Operation Vulandlela Phase 1 initiative, but we need to now move into looking at how we create jobs around this digital economy. So those are big uh, new ticket items. And then uh, there's also a, a focus on infrastructure generally, making South Africa construction site now. We've heard that before, but I think there's the view now that I think it's not gonna be driven by the state-owned enterprises so much and by the public sector. It's gonna have to be done through uh, public-private partnerships. So there's reforms coming through there that will stimulate, I think, an easier processing of public PPPs into the system, including at the municipal level, which is vital. And that could see us stimulating a lot more uh, construction activity. And then a focus on releasing land for housing and doing housing policy differently. I think that's one to watch because I think there's quite a lot of job opportunities there. It's vital that people are housed better. We've still got all this informalization around our cities that is not being dealt with at all. So I think that's a big one to watch. And then obviously the, the low hanging fruit in my view is this, the renewable energy revolution that's underway around the world and the uh, elements that come around that. So can you localize around rollout of uh, renewable energy, wind and solar in particular, but then uh, also the electric vehicle uh, revolution. We know we've got a big manufacturing base for, uh, for uh, internal combustion engines. Can we start integrating electric vehicle technologies into that or hybrids? So that's a big uh, opportunity. And then as we get more renewables into the system, and potentially have uh, cheap marginal electricity at certain times of the day, can we then try and capture that in some sort of economic value? And one of the ways, and it was mentioned in the speech, is through the green hydrogen and producing green hydrogen and then putting those into saleable, tradable products, either green ammonia, which seems to be the popular one, but I think a big opportunity in South Africa to produce green hot, hot briquettes and iron for export into the electric arc furnaces that are going up around the world. And including eventually into South Africa, we're gonna do more electric arc furnaces and then helping those uh, steel companies around the world with their decarbonisation plans. So those are some of the growth levers that we've that were announced. Um, some, I think, are easier to achieve than others. Again, we heard about mineral beneficiation, but not enough about critical minerals mining and the backlogs there. I mean, we really are a mining country and we should be really getting our mining investment up. And without exploration and development, into these critical minerals, we're going to still be a laggard in terms of our mining investment. So I think focusing on the wrong end, <laughs> you know, focusing on you know value addition, is, is in a time when we don't have electricity security and we've got extremely high uh, sparking prices in electricity. You're not a dripping roast uh, as a country to do the minerals beneficiation, but we are still a, a good mining jurisdiction to do that upstream mining and the problem there is the bottleneck upstream but we're not doing exploration and the problem there is we don't have a cadaster. I would have hoped to hear a bit more about that. We didn't. So, but I think on the whole, all the things that were ticked around municipalities, freight logistics, electricity, the green economy, green industrialization, I think those were important signals and I think that's what we need to embrace and we need to have some quick wins and I think one of the quicker wins could be around the renewable energy industrialization around that. And we do have the South African Renewable Energy Master Plan now. We now just need that to be published and to get action around that. What are some of the immediate priorities from an economic perspective? Well, I think it's the municipalities. I think, you know, if we look back over the last uh, 10 years, Eskom and Transnet have been the binding constraint on growth. We seem with a lot of effort 
and a lot of co uh, collaboration and business has played a key role here uh, that we are, have seen maybe the worst of load shedding. We're not out of the woods, but we maybe have seen the worst of that extreme load shedding. But we need to build uh, on that. And there are signals that, signs, unfortunately, that <laughs> there's some backward steps being taken this week. Eskim opposing trading licenses at NERSA wasn't a, a very good signal for new investment into the, that we need into the electricity sector. But I think, you know, we will have to push forward there and make sure that sense prevails. And then we need to make sure that uh, the logistics, freight logistics progress continues. But if we really have to prioritise anything from a business and investment perspective, you can't as a business invest into a municipality or into a metro that is failing or doesn't have water or where there might be power at the power station but it can't get to you because the substations are either overloaded or they or they're blowing up so we really need to give municipalities a much more attention that's going to be the next like Eskom and like Transnet providing a bit of a growth impetus now from a very low base we now need to focus I think very much on getting our particularly our big cities back onto an even keel and unfortunately, I think they are about two to three years behind where Eskim and Transnet are. So things could get worse before they get better. But unless there's a much, a lot of attention and a joined up attention, both from these partners in the G GNU, but also bringing in business skills again, I think unless we really focus there, this is going to be the big constraint to growth. And growth is what we need. And that's the mantra from the GNU. So we, I think that is the priority. Get the metros fixed as quickly as possible. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.